And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Siberia. And we are here with Kate in the main hall of the Berkstock University, where she has just finished talking to Professor Pons about Hans Vorlberg and his mammoth. In fact, she just let Vorlberg or um, Hans borrow Vorlberg's um, mammoth doll so he can examine it. She's also developed this strange fascination with the Forest Sauvignon grape, which she read about in a book in the library here. And I don't know why, but this has become an obsession with her. And so he's, Pines has suggested that she talk to the rectors of the university about it. So let's go talk to them so we can get her strange obsession with this grape out of the way and get back to um, our real mission. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. So, yeah, let's talk about this and just get it out of the way. Are you sure there are no Amazon Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt? Because I have just interviewed the station master and the paleontologist, and what they said really didn't convince me that there wasn't any here. We are quite definite on this point. There are no Sauvignon plants growing in Barockstadt. You see, miss, the Amazon forest Sauvignon is a rare shrub that requires very special conditions for growth. That's right. Uh, conditions that are very hard to reproduce, believe you me. Difficult, but not impossible. Uh, fortunately, our garden has proved very successful. Your garden? So... There is a garden in Barakstadt? Oh, the garden. Well, if there was one, it would be only a little garden hidden behind the station. But our station master would be very proud of it. He would take very good care of it, too. Everything would grow marvelously if we were able to cultivate it at all, and it would be all down to his gardening prowess. And we would be proud as punch. And we wouldn't forget the role the paleontologist might play in this. What's the paleontologist got to do with it all? Without him and without his laboratory, how would we make the wine, do you think? And it would be good wine indeed, my dear colleagues, would it not? Oh, yes, a delightful balm to soothe away our long hours of toil and our heavy responsibilities. We would wait impatiently every year for the arrival of the year's produce. So, if I have understood you correctly, there are indeed Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt. They are cultivated in a garden behind the station, then turned into wine by the paleontologist's loving care. And finally, the pleasure of tasting is yours. If I'm not very much mistaken, gentlemen, you have a minor racket operating here. Miss, you do go jumping to some hasty conclusions. We never said that. That's not what we said at all. Uh, we we were talking in the conditional, you know, with ifs and woulds. So, what would happen if I had such a hunch? Hmm, you would have to keep it to yourself, of course. Yes, it, if you would be so kind as to keep it a secret, <laughs> it would only be a small local concern producing barely a few bottles every year. That's right. Nothing so grandiose as a business. Otherwise, we'd be liable to be fined. So, we can't count on your discretion, can't we? Don't worry. I have no intention at all of getting messed up in anything. So, yeah, they're making wine here at the university. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Well, Kate, you're an attorney. You should be um, really appreciative of the... Um, do that little stumble, Kate. 
you should be really appreciative of how carefully they phrased all that. I mean, isn't that how you do all your contracts? But All right. Let's go talk to Professor Pons now that we've been let in on the secret and see if Pons will give us any more information on this Forest Sauvignon. Maybe Kate's just a just likes wine. Maybe she's a wine connoisseur and so she wants to find out about this Forest Sauvignon or Amazon Sauvignon wine herself. And she closed the door behind her. Okay. This is Pons' lab. Now Pons is a paleontologist. Why does he have a, what looks like a chemistry lab? In fact, that looks suspiciously like the first chemistry lab I had in college. Oh well. Um, we're going to go over here this thing first. Why does he have a lab like this? And the main thing we need over here is, among all this other stuff, right here, there's one of those waste cylinders. Remember, we got a couple of those in, back in Valley Glen. And we can listen to that back on the train. So let's go to the other end of the lab. We'll do that later. And here's Pons, of course. Uh, before we talk to him, there's a couple of things we need from this end of the table. You see we can get this close up on this one table. There's two things we need here. Uh, we need this test tube holder, these tongs. And he happens to have a bottle of Yangala Cola powder. Now, if you remember also the book we took out of the lab, or the la um, library, uh, told us that the Yangala Cola powder um, helps eyesight. And that could come in handy. Let's talk to Pines about his wine. What is it you want to know, miss? About the wine. I have just had a very interesting little discussion with the rectors. It seems that you are perfectly aware of the existence of Sauvignon plants here in Barakstadt. Apparently, you find them very tasty. Not at all. I never drink wine. I prefer to make it. Production to me is much more satisfying. So you don't deny? Why, uh, seeing as the rectors have let you into our little secret, I even converted part of the laboratory into a fermenting room for Amazon Sauvignon wine production. <laughs> of course, I cannot produce wine in large quantities. We have to be discreet, uh, after all. And what about your students? Haven't they noticed anything? Well, oh, you know how students are. After all, a chemical reaction is still a chemical reaction, even when grapes are involved. And malolactic fermentation takes time. Sometimes strange odors begin to waft through the corridors. Then I just burn a little sulfur. Incredible. Totally incredible. You are really something, Professor Pons. Really something. Hmm. I'm not sure whether I should take that as a compliment. I don't think it was intended as one, Pons, so... Yeah. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Now, the um, mammoth toy, you may have seen it, it's sitting right over there. You can't take it yet, because he's still studying it. So, while he's doing that, let's go see what we can do about getting the $100 we need to get the train moved. Now, if you remember, in order to do that, we have to get the bandstand in front of the um, main hall here working. But before we can do that, we have to finish um, up Kate's obsession with the Sauvignon wine. This better be really good wine after all we're doing through this, since it has nothing to do with anything we're trying to work on here. But, okay. Um, the only person we haven't talked to after getting the lowdown from the rectors is the station master, who is still up here. So let's go talk to him. Excuse me, station master, but I need you again. Can't you see? I am very, very busy. Uh, no. 
I, well, well, I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. Now, when last time, Sauvignon. You have been playing with me, haven't you? You knew very well there were forest Sauvignon berries in the station garden. No, not at all. I've never seen your Sauvignon thing. You don't have to lie to me. I know all about it. You and the rectors are in cahoots, and the professor's lab has been turned into a distillery. You've all got a nice little smuggling racket on the side. Smuggling racket? Hey, hey lady, you're going a bit far there. It's just a little on-the-side thing we got going. That's all. It's just for ourselves. Hey, you honest. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Aren't you worried about the reputation of this fine university? The authorities should be informed of this. But we haven't done anything wrong. It's not a crime. Can you open the gate to the garden, please? Sure, sure. No problemo. Right away, miss. No problemo? <laughs> what country are his perch stock in? <laughs> okay. Now, he actually went this way. You can't tell where he is. Remember a while back I pointed to a gate in the background? We're going to go look at that gate now. And we have to take this path through the greenery here. There you are. Please feel free to visit the garden at your leisure. And uh, uh, there was just one thing. Uh, I'm not a liar. Not really. Just mum's the word. There is the reputation of the university to think about. And I have superiors and I have to do what I can. I understand. Don't you worry. Oh, thank you, miss. Yeah. Okay. And the station master wanders away. Okay. Now let's go see what these... What is so fascinating about these forest Sauvignon berries. Is it just me or is the garden out here less impressive than the garden actually inside the greenhouse. Or the station greenhouse. Well, anyway, here are the Forest Sauvignon grapes, and we can take some. And there we go. She keeps them under her jacket along with everything else, of course. And even though all these things are covered with grapes, we can't take any more. I don't need that for the time being. Okay, fine. So we go back then. Yes, we went through this whole exercise just to get those grapes. Well, it turns out there's actually a reason for it, because we're following adventure game logic here, not real world logic. What we need those grapes for, remember when we first arrived here in Berkstock, there was a... Kate went off one side of the train and there was a ladder and some birds underneath it, and Kate um, was afraid of the birds. Basically, she couldn't get near the ladder. These birds. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use the grapes to distract these birds. They didn't call at her when she got that close this time, so... There we go. And the birds all decide that this is far more interesting than... ...where they just were. Now, I'll point out, they're birds. They could have just left the, um, station and gone and gotten the grapes themselves, but... ...given that they just walked over the grapes, maybe they're tired of flying or something. Anyway, we have to go up here. And then go up further. Because I guess it just wanted to show us this aerial view of the train here. Here we go. Alright. 
Remember the mechanical eagle the station master told us about? The one that was supposed to scare the um, Amazon cuckoos away? Well, it, this is apparently the eagle. Obviously, that's Hans Wahlberg's work. And not only is it not scaring anything away, well, somebody's built a nest in its back. Now, remember what we know about the Amazon cuckoo? How they have a different size egg? Impossible to reach it. Kate, it's like two feet away from you. We'll use the test tube holder to grab it. And we have a cuckoo's egg. All right. So, now we can go back down. Because, of course, we need a cuckoo's egg. And we're going to take a shortcut through the train. Hey, look, the birds have left. Maybe they decided to fly out and get the rest of the grapes off the trees. Yeah, they'll probably be mad at Kate for that. Yeah, I'm just taking a shortcut through the train. Okay, wait a minute. This is a clockwork train. The thing runs on wound-up springs. That's the engine, which is supposed to presumably have all the springs in it. This is the passenger car. What is this? On a normal train, that would be the coal car. It would hold the coal to run the steam engine. It's a clockwork train. It doesn't use coal. What's this car for? <sighs> Just one of the many mysteries of Siberia, I guess. All right. Yeah, miss, miss, miss. Please, uh, excuse me. Yes. You know, I wanted to apologize for our little. I brought you a bottle of wine. Marachstadt Sauvignon. Very good year. Let me know what you think. I'm very touched. Thank you. Good luck on your journey, lady. Thank you. All right. So she finally has her wine. We're glad you got that out of your system, Kate. But the re real reason we did all this is, through normal adventure game logic, we need this to fix the bandstand. Alright, not the wine. That would be silly. Okay, here's the bandstand we're supposed to fix. Over here on the far side, there is a door that we can look at. Now notice the door has this little scale thing with what looks like an egg on one side of it. The door right now won't open. This thing's jammed. We have to put the cuckoo's egg here, which balances the scale. Now given that it's just sitting there, I guess I could have just reached up and pulled it down, but... Now we're inside. And inside, we go down these steps, or this ladder. And this is obviously the mechanism for the bandstand that we're supposed to repair. Or maybe we can just pull the lever to turn it on. Yes, Kate, satisfied with the job, well done. Now, here's the thing. The bandstand was broken, and they couldn't fix it. But fixing it basically involved opening the door, going downstairs, and turning it on. What is the maintenance department at Thurkstock University really like? I mean, come on. And we're automatically outside again. So, 
let's just go back. And the, just as a little side note, every time you're outside in this courtyard from the university here, the ba you can hear the band playing from now on. So they did add that as a nice touch. I give them credit for that. Well, let's go tell the rectors that we fixed their band scene until someone turns it off again. Now, how do you normally get in that door? You have to go find a cuckoo egg every time you want to get into that door, especially since Hans Vorberg obviously built the bandstand and also built the eagle designed to scare the cuckoos away. If the eagle had been working, there would have been no cuckoo eggs, and they wouldn't have had any eggs to open the bandstand with. I'm overthinking this, aren't I? All right. Hi, Rectors. We fixed your bandstand. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. All right. Gentlemen. I have managed to repair your university bandstand. The bandstand is playing again. This is marvelous news. We are really very grateful, very grateful indeed. Yes, very grateful indeed. We will look back on your visit with much fondness in our hearts. And now let us in turn honor our word. How much is it you need, miss? A hundred dollars, if it's not too much to ask. Something about it. <clears throat> we agreed to grant you the aforementioned sum, miss. You may now leave with your train. Under the jacket. There we go. And okay. while we're on the subject, when will you be leaving? Uh, yes, because now you should relocate your train as quickly as possible. Well, we're going to do that. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. You notice that it's always tea time for these people? Every time we end a conversation, it's tea time. And I'm pretty sure they're not British. So... All right, now we can go talk to the people in the barge and tell them that we have their money so that they can help us move the train. Wait, you really think it's going to be that easy? Haha, <laughs> okay. See, fancy hands playing. All right. If you remember, the barge is way over here. We could go through the station, but we'll just take the shortcut this way. Well, they maintain their grounds well, but they can't figure out how to open the door into the bandstand and turn it up. No, I'm not going to let that go. Okay. Now, this is one of the stranger points. The game does this a lot. Um, you can get into a conversation with these people, and it won't do you any good. What you have to do is just give them the money. There you go. Here's your money. I've checked it. It's all there. You've checked it. It's all there. They're your... They're barge people. It's not like you're paying off the mob or something. Ah, thank you. Not difficult to get dollar. See? You are a real businesswoman. I'm not the only one around here. We pleased to do deal with you. Now, you open lock or we no help you. Why didn't you manage to open them? After all, you don't have to be a genius. Ma, for what pimps you know, sister? Decline a madam. 
No se sa ye mar alles non comprendo en alora caput en andere mordel. This guy simultaneously on speaking French, Spanish, and German. Caput, caput. My husband say instructions complicated. No understand manual. My husband angry. Very angry. Oh, now telephone broke. Caput. Now that is annoying. What are you gonna do next? We wait repairman. Well, I don't have the time to wait. I'll have to go have a look. There must be some way of releasing the opening mechanism. Take key. Sailor always need key for lock. Okay, watch carefully where this lands because you're going to have trouble finding it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. It's right here. But, yeah, that is a pixel hunt if there ever was one if you didn't know it was there. All right. We've got the key, let's go look at the lock. Which means we have to go to the other end of the station. And why can't Kate run up steps? All the way across the station. Where's my cursor go? Hello? Hey, how's my little baby girl? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I saw this fantastic fur coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, well, someone or another. Uh, anyway, they got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end, he asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your mother, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. Oh, too emotional by far. Especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But Frank promised me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's got the sweetest little. I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. Well, to you too, my little munchkin. Yeah, we got interrupted by a phone call. Um, so, I actually think the purpose of that phone call was to remind you that you have a phone because that's about to become important. This is the lock control. See how the water is high up in here inside the lock? Here's the lock control. And yes, the phone is broken. That looks broken. Yep. So we look at this sign. In case of problems, contact the following number. Yes, they helpfully translated that once. Now, here's the problem. See, the no phone number is here. But you can't use the phone right now. I'm clicking on that and doing nothing. It's because you can't use that part of your inventory in the close-up. You have to back out of the close-up where you can no longer read the number. So. I hope you wrote it down. If you didn't, it was 2766-6742. So, see, like I said, I think the purpose of that phone call was to um, remind you that you have a phone. 2766-6742. Six, 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 
too. And yeah, that's how phones used to work. Welcome to the East Block Control Center. To start, press the number sign. And you have to wonder, um, why is this in English? Okay, same reason everybody else is speaking English, I guess. If you are using the Haltenberg lock, press 1. If you are using the Morloff lock, press 2. If you are using the Conning Pass lock, press 3. If you are using the Barrackstadt lock, press 4. To return to the last command, press the number sign. Well, we're at the Barrackstadt lock, which is 4, so... If you want to raise the water level, press 1. If you want to lower the water level, press 2. To return to the last command, press the number sign. Okay, that's high up in there, so we need to lower it, so we need to press 2. You want to lower the water level in the Barrackstadt lock? To confirm your choice, press star. To return to the previous command, press the number sign. Well, yes, that's what we want, so we can press star. Your request has been logged. Unfortunately, our regional technician is currently on holiday, and no replacement is available. We will reply to your request within 48 hours. In case of an emergency, please operate the lock system manually. We apologize for delays to our service. Okay. That was a brilliant waste of time. But okay, let's look over here. Let's do this by hand. Okay, this is the manual control. Fortunately, we have a key for that. Now, they actually told us how to do this. It's the same as the phone prompts we were just making. You hit the pound sign to start, then you select four. Why you have to do that since I'm physically standing at this lock is anyone's guess. Then I have to put two to lower it and then star to activate it. And there goes the lock gate so Now we have to go all the way back to the other end. and tell the people on the barge that we've opened their lock part. <sighs> the game likes you... The game looks great, but it does get tiring going through these same screens over and over again. All right, let's talk to these people. Hey there, on the boat. Good tag, Sherda Mademoiselle. My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? All right, we'll tell them the locks are open. Right, I've got it. I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. God verdomme! Das ist eine echte Ladies. Alle toi, range alle Dingen and obligados de Dame. Ach, c'est content und zurück again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up! We hurry to travel again. Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay? And there it goes. What fit under that bridge? I guess it will. Okay. Um. Now we have to go all the way back to the lock. So much running back and forth.
Alright, there's the boat waiting for us. Now, if you remember, the instructions also told us how to raise the water. It's the same command as we use a 1 instead of a 2. So, we do the same thing again. Pound sign to start, lock 4, raise water, go. Day now. Oh, there it goes. It's like four lock, and it's gone. And now it's over here waiting near the front of the train. So now we have to get there ourselves. Again, the game really loves to make you walk back and forth through this station. Hey there! On the boat! Da, da! Barge on other side! You still need us? Yes, we have to train. It must be really neat to travel by river. Oh, schleck the boat! I don't forget that that's good. For me, loca loca is fantastic. And a kleiner road met usted. Okay, you guide. <laughs> Excuse me? My husband say... He like his barge, and he not like your train. Too noisy. If you want to travel in tin can, you stay in tin can. Sure. That's not what I meant to do. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, loco coco mitchen. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train, and chain to train with barge. Oh, catch it, sir. Okay, I'm not totally sure how that's going to help. Uh, the chain is actually right here under Kate, even though it looks like it's going that way. It's actually over here. All we need to do is that hook we picked up earlier, we need to attach that hook to the chain. And then Kate will automatically attach that to the train. And honestly, I'm not totally sure how that's going to work, because it looks like you're going to pull the, that pipe or whatever it is off the side of the train. And I don't know where they're planning to go with that barge, because that looks like a solid gate right in front of them. But, okay, we need to go catch up with them now. because the train has finally left the station. And as usual, we need to go this way. Come on, Kate. There we go. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Potts. I'm about to start my lecture on the u cold at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. <sighs> All right. So, well, the train's out of the station, and we need, do need to go talk to Professor Potts, because he still has the mammoth ball, you remember. So, we're just going to go back and talk to him.
And actually, this lecture is going to take a while. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take a break here. And when we come back, we will finish getting Kate back to the University of Bergstock. And we will hear Professor Pons tell us everything we need to know about the you call people. Until then, this is Dennis. This is Pansdalf of the Paleo Gamer. And I will see you next time.